Welcome back. Let's find out if we've got anything wrong so far. For that, we go to TV's Andy Levy. So, Andy, you seem really excited. I am, Greg. Finally got the latest Goop newsletter from Gwyneth Paltrow. It has some excellent gardening tips. That's awesome, Andy. So what, what are the, some of the tips? Tell me. Well, first of all, and this is so Gwynny, she writes that the tips are from her friend named Jose, who's an expert in the garden. And I just love that she gives credit to her friend Jose, who's an expert in the garden. Don't you think she means her gardener? Uh, I do not, Greg. This is her friend, Jose, who's an expert in the garden. <laughs> yes, yes. I don't know what part of that you don't understand. Right. Anyway, Jose says all you need are seed trays, uh, moist, nutrient-rich soil, gloves, although they're optional, and a mister. So tonight, after work, I'm off to find me a mister. Uh, here's a tip, Andy. Look for one that fits in your hand or you'll cramp up. <laughs> Tell me about it. I am not making that mistake again. Let's hope so, Andy. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Jose, and I'm totes jealous that you get to be BFFs with Quinny. Yeah. Yeah. He's still a gardener. She's a pathetic person. A pathetic person. Pre How she's pretending that her you? gardener is How her dare friend. You? A person who Jose. Who, <laughs> it's a, who's who friends, knows gardening. A person who sees no boundaries in terms of friendships, whether it's cultural or socioeconomic, and you call her a monster, Greg. I a, think we know who the true monster a is here, sir. A and that is you, sir, <laughs> who are the true monster. She's a fake country star. Yes. <laughs> she's fake. You can always tell how angry is by the amount of sirs. Yes. Yeah. 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 And he was super angry at you. That's sir. Yes. That's called over disorder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Bin Laden's journal. Greg, you mentioned the leader of Al Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, uh, whose name you believe was uh, Steve, I think it was? Yeah, Steve. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not, not so much with the Steve. Oh, really? Yeah, it was Nasir al Wahishi. <laughs> well, you know why I put Steve in there. Because you couldn't pronounce Nasir al Wahishi? Exactly. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> Uh, Terry, you asked why the White House keeps telling everyone how much intel we got from the raid, they, that they just need to shut up and act on it. Is it possible, and I'm, I'm just I'm trying to play devil's advocate here, is it possible that they're actually full of crap about what they got and they're running a huge disinformation campaign on al-Qaeda? Yes, that is possible. Okay. That would be neat. Wouldn't it? Yes. I yeah. hope that's true, actually. Yeah. I hope that's true. We both know it's probably not, but... But I like your yeah. devil's advocate try. Yeah. Well done. I give it a shot. Yeah, okay. Uh, Kaylee, you said by, that by... Further along Terry's point, you said that by telling Al Qaeda what we found, we're making it easier for them. Mm -hmm. But we're not telling them specifically what we found. And again, to play devil's advocate, Al Qaeda had to assume that the minute we raided, that they heard that we raided this compound, that we had everything that bin Laden had. So are we really telling right. them anything? Well, we are. By saying 100 flash drives, five computers, I'm pretty certain that Zawahiri knows what's on those five computers and 100 flash right. drives. Yeah, we're not getting specific, but at right. the same time, he certainly knows what's on them, and he knows we've got them. Right, but my point is, once he heard that we raided this compound, didn't he have to say to himself, or all of Al Qaeda have to say, uh, we have to assume all of that stuff is compromised? But who knows, perhaps someone destroyed something right. before, yeah. perhaps someone, um, one of the computers broke and they threw it out, but by right. saying the exact number, were, they know something. No, fair uh, may, I defend, fair uh, may I defend Kaylee here for a moment, Andy? Oh. Uh, uh, he, if, yeah, if, I just said she made a fair point, but go ahead and <laughs> well, be her knight in shining armor now. You voice, now hold on, you voice an inaccuracy though, you voice an inaccuracy. In Islam, they do not believe in assuming. Read your Quran. I, I like it, though. That was, that was worthy of an interruption. Wow. wow. I yeah. like that. Wow. I like it. Man. Some of these are just facts. Yeah. Some of these are just the facts. Show back yes. on now. Yeah. Man. Uh, hang on. I'm just telling our producers I want an extra minute now. Uh, Bobby, along with not having the internet, Bin Laden also did not have Netflix streaming video because he'd need an internet connection for that. Come on, you, you, that, you know that, you're man. You're going to pick up me. I'm feeling very you know vulnerable that, man. tonight. You, you just come on the show and all you do is bitch about something. You never anything positive. <laughs> it was a joke. I'm sure we could. Oh, it was a joke? That's the best you could do? Oh. See, that's, that's, the the part, best that's the part I missed, that it was a joke. <laughs> Wait, wait a second, wait, wait, wait. You don't need, uh, excuse me, you don't need uh, uh, the internet to get Netflix. You can get it by mail. He might not have mail service to where he was, mm. so that's something you don't know. You can get Netflix right, but either you were, over the you internet were, through Yeah, that's not what mail. you were talking about when you made your joke. Oh, my joke with quotes. My, <laughs> my alleged joke. I did not put quotes around that, sir. I did not put sir. quotes around that, sir. Yeah, between you and the talking newspaper, this whole show's going to hell. Right? <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? Uh, I don't uh, care what you sir. say about Andy. You can say whatever you want about Andy. Talking newspaper. Pinch, pinch. That's, 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 that's a problem. Balderdash! Balderdash, I say! That's a boundary that's been crossed, I think. You and your Borscht Belt can tighten up and go home, sir. <laughs> You are no chaplain. Uh, ugly naked guy on the subway. I'm assuming nobody intervened because people like that have crazy strength. Yes. Yeah, yeah you, do, you don't mess with crazy strength. Yes. But, Terry, I'm with you. The thing in the classroom was far more disturbing. The teacher had to be twice the size of that little punk. 
right? Yeah, I, I actually, that, that's really hard for me to watch. Because yeah. I'd probably lose my job if I was a teacher because yeah. I'd have choked that kid out. And what's the, idea, what's the deal with the other, the other kid just standing there? Well, again, it's, it's sort of that, you know, if, I, if that was my son, I would teach him, hey, if a kid hits you, yeah. then you hit him back. But again, that's a whole, our society, it's all going to hell, Andy. Was he, was he, was he the Mahatma? I, I mean, don't know. I, maybe he was like some sort of Buddhist out. type figure. I, I, no. I don't know, man. Yeah. Wait, get away from me. Uh, oh, I just got a kiss from it. By the way, this is the best show ever. <laughs> don't tell, don't tell, don't ask. I'm not going to say anything. It's cool, man. Uh, Greg Log, Common is invited to the White House. Kelly, are you saying that because Common and the Obamas attended the same church, uh, that that means the Obamas were aware of all of Common's lyrics? I, I'm saying that that is a very strange connection. I wanted to point that out. But what I am saying is that these guys are researched. Laura Bush had to turn guys away because they found mm. out bad things in their past. We, you can't right. think that this guy hasn't come to the White House twice and they didn't know these lyrics. They knew. They knew he wanted to set Bush on fire and frankly they were okay with it. Mm. Okay. Mm. All right. Uh, also you said the more important question is how many common songs Obama has on his iPod. Right. Why, and, why is that? And no, it was supposed to be a joke. Oh, when no okay. one got and how many common it. songs right. how many common <laughs> songs are on the iPod he gave Queen Elizabeth? I want to know that too. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. I am Bad not attempt at a joke, I guess. <laughs> I am, all I know is I am not showing you my iPod. Oh. Uh, <laughs> by the way, on Wednesday, Common posted on his Facebook wall, quote, politics is politics and everyone is entitled to their own opinion. I respect that. The one thing that shouldn't be questioned is my support for the police officers and troops that protect us every day. Peace, y'all. There you go. Nice. No, nice. No. By the way, here's the real problem. Lost in all this outrage over Common is the fact that a uh, true monster it has been invited to the White House for this poetry thing. And I mean, of course, Amy Mann. What? Yes. She's, she is also at the same event. Uh, you know, I'm okay with Common. No, but that's, Amy this is what Mann? I'm saying. Right. You mean have, from Till Tuesday? Boys have, Carrie? Have you read, have you read some of her yes. lyrics? Have you read some of her lyrics? No. Listen to this. Save me from the ranks of the freaks who suspect they could never love anyone, because I could tell you know what it's like, the long farewell of the hunger strike. She is clearly sympathizing with provisional IRA member Bobby Sands' <laughs> hunger strike back in 1981. I don't think that's the kind of person we want in the clearly. White House. You know what? I apologize to Common. I think we, you know, we've misdirected yes. our, our emotion, and Amy Mann, we're coming yep. for you. Yep. This is why Andy Levy is on this show. Yes. 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 You set us straight on this stuff. He's no man. pinch, hmm. but... Amy Mann is a monster. No one is a uh, Just lastly, being voted most likely to succeed apparently sucks. I don't think it's the most likely to succeed award that's hurting these people. I think it's the most likely to think something you won in high school means something award that's really <laughs> killing them. Uh, and just lastly, you guys showed your pictures or whatever. For what it's worth, I was voted most likely to be correcting a bunch of buffoons on a 3 a.m. TV show back really? in high school. Yeah. Mm. We had very specific awards. Mm. We'll keep yeah. chasing that rainbow. That's yeah. 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 How dare you call Kaylee a buffoon? <laughs> Oh, I didn't mean her. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. Go away, strange man. Coming up, Jennifer Aniston is dead. Tired of being asked about friends reunions. Leave her out of it, people. But first, what's going on with this picture? I don't know. Probably something to do with planes. Otherwise, we wouldn't show it. He's got an inclination to destroy the situation. I speak of Frank Sorrentino, father of Jersey Shore star Mike the situation in Sorrentino. He had a dad who on Wednesday released two bizarre video rants online. In the first, Frank accuses Sitch of leaving his family in the dust while he gets rich. But in the second video, Frank tells the tale of how his son was fired from a summer job after receiving oral sex from a 40-year-old co-worker, then claiming sexual harassment. Roll the tape, roll tapers. He needed a summer job. So this time I put him with my friend who owned a big construction company. He's working up there with some 30s some 40-year-old women. He caught the attention of one of them. Uh, she decides that she wants to suck <laughs> And basically, she gives him <laughs> in the office. This clown wants to go and claim sexual harassment because some 40-year-old broad sucked his <laughs> Caused a problem between me and my friend, or as I would say, uh, instead of a problem, caused a situation. Mm, wow. What a guy. Wow. Anyway, let's discuss this in the lightning round. Oh, that was good. Wow. Bobby, are you surprised that there's family strife in the situation's well, life. Well, you know, the situation always seemed to be such a smart guy, and yeah. obviously <laughs> yes. he got it from his father. You know, yeah. when you have a dad who's such a great role model, you see why it's handed down to the children. <laughs> I know. That's why he grew up with such a... But what's amazing to me, you know, the father's complaining about how the son gets rich and leaves the family. I always thought, and being a father, and even mm -hmm. if you're not a father, I thought that you want your kids to do better. Well. I thought people came to the new world <laughs> and sent the kids to college <laughs> and didn't want to work He's in the complaining. Yeah. He's complaining but, that his son's a success. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The greatest yeah. thing ever. 
terrible. Know, the fact that his son's making a lot of money, he's an idiot, and he's banging broads. He might not be Charlie Sheen, but he's shooting for it, and that's the American. He's making, <laughs> he's making that's millions American a year. T Terry, whose side do you want? I got nothing, man. You got, I got, I got nothing. Just because you've never seen an episode I've, of Jersey Shore. I've never seen the show. Kaylee, it's always no. about money, isn't it? And whenever it somebody in a family gets a lot of money, this it happens. It is, and he's clearly mad that all the situation's money is going towards his tanning and not his family. But uh, <laughs> sensing some jealousy here, the dad's a little jealous of the abs and the tan. I mean, who would He's going to look like his dad yeah. in five years. Oh, let's That's hope not. Be the, let's oh, hope I hope not. so. Oh. Billy, uh, your family often posts videos condemning you, and yet you don't seem bothered <laughs> at all. No, uh, mostly because I don't have a computer, but I'm told they are brutes. Yes. I will say this. Uh, I love how he thinks that he's going to somehow disparage the situation <laughs> to his fans by talking about the loathsome oral sex he got <laughs> from a female co-worker. Yeah, they're all looking at me like, yeah, throwing power. That's our boy. Well done, Dad. You really know your son you know, and it, his fan base. It dispelled uh, the rumors that he's gay. That's what the dad was doing. This if, was all yeah. a strategy. If he was smart, yeah, he would have just said 40-year-old co-worker oh. and left it at that. that oh. Yeah. Right. Next good. topic, for the 12th time this week, it seems, another passenger was arrested for trying to open an airplane door during a domestic flight. This first, well, the first was on a flight from Houston to Chicago. Well, last night's was from Orlando to Boston. These are all cities, I believe. And this comes just two days after a Yemeni man was arrested for yelling and banging on a cockpit door of another flight 10 minutes before it was to land in SF. Kaylee, what is going on here? What well, the hell is going on? I, I, I know it's it's crazy that this all happened at once, but we're almost conflating the crazy guys who are just upset for sitting on a plane too long, like was the one yeah. case with the terrorists, because they're not the same. I mean, I get being a little angry that you're on there for so long. I've been on there sitting on the plane for four hours at yeah. one point. I mm. wanted to go, go run and push open an emergency door, too. Yes. But you want to know something? When I flew out here to do this lovely show, I came out all the way from L.A. just to do this. Oh, you know that. Nice. I'm so no, sorry. Yeah. When I flew out here, I was sitting next to a crying baby, and I was right next to the bathroom, and I was kind of close yeah. to trying to open the door. <laughs> yeah. I can get it. It happens. You know, you know, here, Terry, okay, from your background, why do you think that you're seeing this from normal people, like not the guy that yelled Allah Akbar, mm -hmm. but like normal people who want to open, uh, open it up, and what do you do when it happens? At least people are tackling him, right? Well, that, that's the thing, too. At, at least now, hopefully, maybe because it's the airplane situation. Yes. I don't even want to use the word situation. Let's move on. <laughs> in the airplane scenario, hopefully people aren't doing the thing we talked about earlier with the dumb cell phone. Yeah. Hey, get involved. If some dude's going towards the cockpit, you better tackle him. Yeah. Don't, don't do the, the whole world's watching because then you're going to get blown up. Well, speaking of, Bill, you've also been tackled outside the cockpit before, but that's a local bar you frequent. Right, right. I'm no longer allowed in there. And it wasn't really and being tackled. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Hans. I, I still owe you five bucks. <laughs> but isn't the downside here, Bill, what is going to happen is they're get the, 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 the last straw, they're going to ban booze on flights. Because this is what's, I think yeah. what's going to happen is people That's are mixing That's the problem. Booze it goes back to your ambient theory. Yeah, it's not the booze, it's the pills. Yeah. And if mm -hmm. people can't control, they should actually start testing for amp. What's going to happen? No, they can't. Well, they well, they I, I, I actually, no actually way, you're yeah. going to hate hearing this, but <laughs> no. I feel like ambient is going to be illegal within um, the next five years. All the stuff you're hearing. You, people Better blame the up. pills, people blame the alcohol. I blame the Arabs. Call me crazy. You know, maybe that's just me. Way to be blunt. It's a Yemeni guy. Did you notice? <laughs> the, the, no, but you notice the story hello. about the Yemeni story? The first five or six stories never mentioned that. They yeah. never mentioned those yeah. facts. I thought that was weird. And then I started reading, uh, he, he shouted Allah Akbar or was report. And I'm going like, I didn't read that in the first Political part. correctness. You yeah. can't mention the guy's race or else you're a racist. And then they, said that, they said that he was just crazy, but yeah. that's too weird. They also mm -hmm. said they also said the, the uh, Fort Hood shooter was just a crazy guy. Too. Yeah, that's And true. I think it was kind of an important piece of information. Well, we yeah. found that he was, he was in his life. In my yeah. defense, yeah. they were passing out peanuts and I have horrible allergies. <laughs> and Allah Akbar, I meant, is ironically. Oh, I read that, yes. Oh, okay. They didn't get Pissing at what? Huh? We're pissing at what? Peanuts. Oh, oh, I think. Oh. Hans, Hans, you're, hello. You're still, hello, you're Hans. still at the cockpit. <laughs> All right. Illinois State Senator Shane Coulter says parents with fat kids should oh. lose their standard two grand per kid deductions. Coulter has not introduced a bill yet, but said of the state's obesity uh, problem, quote, it's the parents' responsibility that have obese kids. Take the tax deduction away for, for, for parents that have obese kids. Terry, why is everybody picking on like chubby kids? It seems like they're the targets for everything. Mm -hmm. Who's going to stand up for them? I am. We, I, you and I will. Yes. Because, because you know, I, I like chubby kids. And the yeah. thing is, <laughs> I think it's, per, well, that sounded really weird. 
I meant, I meant it's. We'll remove I, that. How do I we cover that? We will remove Cut that. that. Forget but, it. But yes. I what I was going to say was let's move on. Uh, I, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, I was going to say. Yeah. You know what? Uh, why this big government thing? I thought that was a Republican uh, yeah. legislator. Dude, you're supposed to stand for small government. Yeah. Don't Now you want more? Get, leave the kids alone. Leave yeah. them alone. Bobby, couldn't some idiot starve, some kid, starve his kids for the two grand? Well, you know, you see the fat kids. You see the fat parents. And if you really want to stop the fat kids, you know, talk about taxing the yeah. parents. But here's the thing. They tax alcohol. They tax tobacco. So you tax the junk food and get the fat kids before they get fat and get the money and then put them in a physical education program. Here's the thing. I'm your next governor. Here's where I'm running right here today. There right you here. Go. I got less than a minute here, Kaylee. Here's my theory. Every, every kid that is chubby, well, almost all of them thin out by adults. Everybody says right, I was a fat kid. Right. Leave these kids alone. And how are you going to operationalize this? It's going to be like a cattle call where you stand up and you weigh them. What's the yeah. cutoff weight? Yeah, yeah that's what I want to know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Last yeah. word, Billy. You starve yourself by choice, so this has no barrier. Well, yeah, well, I learned it by watching my mom. They're taxing all these kids with, who are fat and happy. I didn't get any food. Yeah. Tax my parents. Exactly. Punish them for trying I to kill me. I lay off the chubby kids. Every model, every actress says they were fat when they were a kid, so they always work out fine. All right. <laughs> Time for another break. And remember to check out the new Red Eye podcast. One every day is new. Boy, I read that right. To catch them, go to foxnewsradio.com. Click on Red Eye. Uh, tonight we talked about what do we? Uh, I don't know. Well, what did we talk about? I don't know. Just go <laughs> Some to the stuff. I can't remember. It was things. <laughs> So last night I told you how much I enjoy nude Scrabble, and I do, but I also love charity, so let's get to my latest piece of art. It's Unicorn Jones holding the head of Osama bin Laden. The title for this piece of art is Unseemly Celebration. And as a first, I dedicate this to Rosie O'Donnell, a true patriot. The highest bid right now comes from Kat Jagger Poland, Pollen, it's nice name, real. who's offered $1,500 for this drawing. So the rest of you have till Friday to beat uh, Kat, to beat Kat. To make a bid, email your offer to redeye at foxnews.com to be considered. And as you know, all the money this week goes to TAPS, a nonprofit group that provides grief counseling and support programs to families of fallen soldiers. You can go to taps.org to learn more. One more thing, Mike Unileg Jakes wrote in asking where to write in to bid on the art, which is kind of cute because it's where he just wrote into. But Mike, <laughs> since you already got your leg blown off as an army ranger, I'm thinking you don't have to bid. You've more than earned my crappy piece of art. So just send me your address and I will get you something nice. out there pronto, pronto, something special. And let's not forget the real message. It's not about charity. It's about me. <laughs> hey, are you the guy that does all that charity work? Ah, yeah, that's true. Well, I'm still charging you 400 an hour. Oh. And I'm oh. not putting that thing on either. <laughs> oh, fine then. We'll close things out with a post-game wrap-up from TV's Andy Levy. Did you see post of recent shows? Go to foxnews.com slash red eye. We do this. On the next Red Eye, we've got Anthony Cumia from the Opie and Anthony Show. He's a delight. Comedian Amy Schumer, she's fun. And actor Sean Kanan makes his debut on the program. Cool. Back to TV's Andy Levy for the post-game wrap-up. Thanks. Hey, Terry, what you up to this summer? Uh, lots of guns, lots of shooting, and advance thank you to uh, Sergeant Major Pete Gould, probably the most complete operator I've ever met. See you soon, man. Excellent. Uh, Bobby, where are you going to be this Saturday? Hey, Saturday night, I'm going to be at the Westbury Music Fair, but it's not called that anymore. It's got right. some kind of corporate name, but it can be the, at the Long Island Comedy Festival. It's great. I'm headlining that with a couple of other comedians. And really quickly, I was on the radio this morning, and I badmouthed my friend Lisa Lampanelli. And in promise to the next time I went on TV, I'd apologize. So there you go. Right here on Red Eye. The best right. show in the world. Oh. Yeah. I'm sorry, Lisa. I love you. Okay, yeah. there you We're go. Off air she will ago. never see that apology. <laughs> um, hey, Kelly, would you ever date a Democrat? You know what? I tried, and it went down in flames, but I'd be willing to try again if um, he looked anything like Republican Congressman Aaron Schock sure. um, on the cover of Men's Health. Mm -hmm. I would definitely be willing to give Why it a try. Why would you want to date a guy who's more <laughs> obsessed with his abs than his yeah. life? You know what? That's my problem. I go for that type, and again, like, I'll tell you. I, I, you know, I, I, hey, Greg, I Greg, I saw the same cover, and I don't think that she's his type. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. S speaking of which, Bill, would you, Bill, would you ever date a Democrat? Uh, no, Andy. I moved to New
New York for one reason, one reason only. They're huge Republican sequential hermaphrodite population. Mm -hmm. okay. Call me, boys, women. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they're sequential because you never know when they're going to be. Yeah, there. no, it's it, that's why the relationship's always fresh. <laughs> All right, here it comes. Thank you. Uh, I'm straight. All right, <laughs> back to you, Greg. We got to go. Thanks, Andy Kaylee. Always fun. Bill Schultz. Ah, Bill, obviously, no, always Thank a you. pleasure. Thank Terry Shepard, always everybody. a joy. That does it for me. You know who I am. Oh, guys. <laughs>